I'm going to be going over uh, a build that we had from last week, um, and you got a kind of sneak peek of it right there. Um, we're going to be working again on the Welcome to Apocalypse Berg. This was a set that I won off a submission contest from Iceberg Bricks. Iceberg Bricks, um, link in the description. He is a um, another LEGO YouTuber, and um, <clears throat> he ran a, a contest to get up to 1,000 subscribers. When he did, he picked one at random, and this set was the prize. So it's finally in, and we're finally working on it. And if you haven't seen already, we started, or I started last week. This is about how far I've gotten. Um, the, uh, the stream ended before we really got much farther than this. So um, welcome to another stream. And we're gonna be working on this some more. I don't think I'm gonna be doing this every stream because I'm gonna order some parts for micro fighters. And we'll do some micro fighter builds and maybe some more designs. But in the meantime, this set's gonna be huge. It's going to be as big as the Capitol building dome probably. Um, I don't know how many pieces are in it specifically because I never got the box, but I can look it up. Um, let me make sure a couple things here. Just wanna see if this is running so I don't miss any chats. Uh, let's see. So the other, here we go. Pull this up so I can see chats in Facebook because, like I said before, Restream is not working with the chats and all the um, the format, so doesn't matter. We're gonna roll with it. Uh, what's up, Matt and Josh? Thanks for joining. This is also an earlier stream for a Thursday, but we have tickets to see the Lion King tonight, so we're gonna do that instead of stream. Um, if you haven't been following me on Instagram, I did ask in stories uh, to help me figure out the next um, micro fighter that I want to build or that I should build based off the parts that I already had and by a squeaking one vote over no votes it was the punishing one Dengar's ship so we're gonna do that and as a luck would have it I ordered a bunch of parts for it so this was my brickling call hello Beth yeah. Beth will not be joining me to for this stream she's need, gonna go take a nap I need a her, her narcolepsy requires a nap before all the festivities of the Lion King tonight. So, I'm... Okay, that's fine. Um, so, going solo tonight. This is the beverage of choice tonight. Again, we're doing the Wild Basin. Only this one's the uh, Lemon Agave Hibiscus. It's pretty good. These Wild Basins are not bad. I may be having to switch up with these guys for a while. So, again, I know it's early. We're not going to have a lot of people in here tonight, but that's okay. I'm going to roll with it. Anyway, these are the parts I got from um, my last BrickLink order to get a bunch of pieces for the capital because I was short a couple hundred one by one tan bricks. So I had to make an order and I had to get it up to $10 for minimum purchase. So I got these. And these are all the clips that I needed and a bit of a, the round tan plate that I needed for Dengar ship. But also some of the green in here is for the ATAP. So we might do that too. Might do a two for one depending if I get all the parts or not. So. What's up, Gala? Uh, yes, these are very refreshing drinks. So if you're familiar with White Claw, that's the other drink I have in case I get through it all. Um, nobody likes the black cherry, so they always end up as the last ones. But this is basically the same thing. Spiked, boozy, um, sparkling water. Very refreshing. The problem is don't drink a lot of them in one night because it's 5% alcohol. I mean, it'll still, you know, you just think, oh, it's a bunch of sparkling water. I'm going to have seven of them. Don't do that. If nothing else, it gives you a stomach ache. Very bad. So, parts out of the way, build out of the way, announcements out of the way. By the way, who here has been excited about the Apollo 11 anniversary? I haven't got the uh, lunar um, module set yet. I want to because it looks really cool and I can add it to the Saturn V and the women of NASA. And if I ever rebuild the space shuttle, it'll be that too. Um, uh, side note really quick before I finish that thought, I'm trying a new music service, it's uh, Pretzel, instead of um, going to that one YouTube channel, because that YouTube channel got me flagged for a lot of copyrighted content, even though it said uh, stream friendly. Um, Alco Pop. Oh, okay, you know what, I have, I have heard of that. I watch a lot of panel shows, so I, I picked that up. Um, yeah, it's basically that, it's sparkling water with booze in it. I'm sure every culture has something similar to that. Um, 
Of note, I tried to make my own shandies one time. It was not successful. I'm gonna stick to like store-bought sh uh, shandies. Back to Apollo 11. Um, I've been doing nothing the last couple days, but Stacy and Claire, hi. Thanks for joining us, joining me. Um, the Apollo 11 50 year anniversary was uh, started Tuesday and hi Josh. How's it going Josh, other Josh? Um, and I've been doing nothing but watching the live replay and it's been hours and hours and hours of static and them asking them to make adjustments to the course and flushing waste water and it's been just so terribly exciting. I love it. I've also been in YouTube chats with uh, moon landing hoax deniers and it's just been so much fun. Um, hey, 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 Synthetic Mason, what's up? Thanks for joining, man. Good to talk to you. Um, so we're going to get going on this build here. Make sure everything's rolling properly and go to our build camera. So this is where we left off and we're on bag three. So I'll start opening bags, uh, uh, bag crunchies. I'm also at a bit of a weird angle because I'm not, um, I got this bright light behind me and you can see I get washed out every once in a while. I tried to shift it so there was less of this light behind me. I need to set up a dedicated space that maybe also has some place for me to put like a green drop behind it so I can like put, I don't know, stupid crap behind me. I know a lot of my friends do that uh, who do uh, some streaming and they do mixer streaming and stuff and um, it helps to have like a dynamic background but I'm not playing video games. So it really doesn't matter if I'm clear or Whatever, I think this is just fine. Also, if the music's too loud, let me know. It's like wicked loud in my ears, but I turned it down on OBS, so it may be just fine for everybody. It's also kind of um, a mix between like hype and dystopian and a bunch of other stuff, so it's gonna flit around and it's my first time using this service, so we'll see how it goes. All right. Yeah, the, so the 72 hour stream this year was, I won't say it was a bust because I think it worked out well, but um, what happened was I got in after, um, like I had the, like what was, whatever was available because um, my email to Butt Chop got stuck in his spam filter. So he didn't get to it until like a week before. And then he was like, well, I got this slot left. Anybody want to do this? Um, <laughs> la, 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 very low for me. Okay, is it too low? Would you like to hear more music? I can turn that up a little bit. Let's see. If it washes out, just let me know. I'm gonna just scooch it up just a touch. It doesn't matter, it's just background noise for when I feel like I'm not really talking at all, but. It's all right, we're on bag three. Again, I'm actually using stickers this time. Let's see if I can tip this up just a little bit so we can get some more build space. Um, after a couple months, you'd think I'd have this all figured out. Um, so yeah, I don't want it to wash out what I'm saying, but let's just go with that. And again, this is uh, pretzel. You can find it at pretzel.rock, I think. Let me flip over and see what it is. App.pretzel.rocks. That's where I'm getting my music. But again, I'm going to be putting that in the, it's in the description. So anyway, we're going to build, uh, this is bad cop or good cop. Depends on the face. So we got the face. Can't really see it in the crappy webcam, but we'll put it up there anyway. And he has, uh, so how's everybody doing? Anybody else watching? Um, the tattoo parlor, is that what this is? So I think this is the coffee shop. It looks like a coffee shop. I think the tattoo parlor goes over on this side when, once it's all done. So that's like the police station and I think that's the coffee shop because it's got a bunch of coffee in it and it's got a rat behind a, a um, vehicle windshield. And it looks like it has uh, gas pumps where they, use, where they pump your unleaded coffee. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Uh, let's see, I need legs and I need bodies. So anyway, yeah, I've been watching a lot of the Apollo 11 um, 
live feed, and by a lot, I mean the entire time I've been at work, because I kind of, there's not a lot to it, so I just put it on in the background and listen to static while they traverse through the, the universes on their way to the moons. And I really do like the, um, the fun of debating, and by debating is a loose term, with uh, the moon hoaxers. Not what to call, what actually to call those guys. Can we call them loonies? Because the moon? Give me an F in the chat if you like loonies. I don't know what that means, but there we go. All right, so because these guys were being built last time, can we see them? There's the cop. I'll stand with them this time. Here's Emmett. There's your, uh, there's your guys who will keep you company while I'm building. Okay, so off to building more stuff. This is obviously gonna be <laughs> more kitty. Yeah, so the cat might be up here eating as we go along. Um, he's by the door there and he probably wants to go in and get some water. So I'll have to pop over there real quick. So I'm guessing this bit, I don't have to hold that up, it's right here. This bit's gonna be the like in the Statue of Liberty thing where it has to have a handle to hold it up, so I'm supposing that's what that's gonna be. The Moonanites. You know what, I'd heard that somebody else say that. That is genius. I love it. Their arguments are so hilarious too. I think my favorite is the one uh, where we haven't been back, so it's obvious that we haven't been there in the first place. If it's so easy that we went there the first time, how come we haven't gone back? And I just find that argument hilarious because I, I, I went to Boston one time. I haven't been back to Boston, so that must mean that Boston doesn't exist. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, I just love that argument. I mean, there's a bunch of arguments. Oh, there's a kitty. Say hi, kitty. Oh, you're going to smush my stuff all over the place. You're famous now, kitty. And one of these guys. What is the other arguments? Um, the flag is waving. So that must have been filmed in a studio somewhere where we have gravity and air. Um, doesn't matter that it gets jostled when they pull it out of the box or whatever. And it's got a rod in the top of it that holds it up, but it can still be hit and move. No air pressure and low gravity obviously means that flags can't. By now, there's a Starbucks up there. Yeah, right. There totally is a Starbucks up there. Um, oh, this guy goes there too. This is an interesting piece. I haven't seen this piece before. I mean, it's just a panel, but it's got like the corrugated panel. This is probably off like a container ship or a container for a container ship holding thing, like the Maersk ship or something. And I'm guessing that the shallow side goes out. Um, what's another one? Um, another argument is that, um, oh, I had all these like a second ago. Oh, the Van Allen belt. So the Van Allen belt is a region of space that extends out from the earth and it's uh, basically radiation held in by the magnetic field of our planet. And it is extraordinarily dangerous. And how do they survive the Van Allen belt? As though it's a physical barrier that they have to get through. And they, all they say is Van Allen belt, impossible. And true believers and viewers, the Van Allen belt is not, you know, first of all, a complete sphere around our planet. There's, it comes in like a blossom off the, the planet. So there's ways to get past it without doing anything special. You can just kind of skirt it. You can just kind of go around it. Um, oh, sad face. I got to put another sticker on here. So uh, Synthetic Mason, we had this discussion in the first stream. Stickers or no stickers. Look at how many effing stickers there are in here. This is the sheet. If this was like five stickers, I probably wouldn't put them on here, but there's like 50 stickers on here. So I feel like I have to now or else it'll look weird. Anyway, so yes, um, the Van Allen belt, you, despite the fact that you get more radiation after a couple of um, trips to the dentist, 
it's an impassable barrier. It's impossible to get past. Yes, cosmic rays. You get out there t far enough, you hit cosmic rays, and suddenly you're made of rock. Or you can stretch and do stupid stuff, like Reed Richards doing stupid stuff with his powers in the movie, not the comic. The comic's obviously, the comic's obviously superior. So, so yeah, that was a good one, the Van Allen belt. Um, what is another one? There's another brick that goes in there. I'm going to do my very best not to miss pieces because I'm going to get to the end of these bags and go, look, I've got all these giant plates that I wasn't able to actually put on, so must be broken. Um, lost tapes, that's another one. We lost the tapes. All the telemetry and... Um, programming tapes and whatnot for the mission have been lost. Therefore, it was a hoax. We can't prove that we went because we don't have the telemetry tapes. The telemetry tapes, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe were just the recordings on the TV of them doing stuff. And it wasn't even their uh, recordings, it was from the networks. So the networks had the recordings, and they basically borrowed them. Um, oh, it's two of these plates. That's really weird. And then when uh, time came to make space for the tapes, it was like Doctor Who. They recorded over them, or they were just lost because it was the, you know, the 70s, late 60s, early 70s. Or the tapes were lost in the 70s. Um, and it's like we need to make room for other stuff because we don't have digital media yet. But because of that, never happened. Can't be proven. Um, what's another one? The stars. Oh, the stars. There are no stars in any of these photographs. Therefore, fake. So the next time anyone wants to go out and take a picture of the stars with their camera, set it to a really high exposure, and then try to take a picture of stars. Because what they were trying to do is get pictures of the Earth they were trying to get pictures of them on the moon, and it's very bright and very washed out, so it's very high exposure. So starlight doesn't show up. It doesn't show up in sporting photographs. It doesn't show up in landscape photographs. It doesn't show up in other space photographs that we do now. But because it didn't show up in 1969, fake. I just love all of these. So I've spent the last couple days feeding trolls, and I know, I, I, I know better. I know better than that, but I did it because I thought it was hilarious. There's a couple of people I blocked in the chats because I was just like, you're just, you're not even being creative about it. You're just being an asshole. Oh, demonetized. So I'm going to stray from, um, uh, this actually needs a thing on it. Stray from talk of Apollo 11, even though that's, I need to find that in theaters. I think it's still in Austin at a couple theaters, and I think it's playing this weekend because of the 50th anniversary. But um, I'm gonna move over to the Capitol for a second because that's the only thing in my life right now. I am frustrated, and I don't know if everybody's seen the, um, the photo on Instagram about it, but I was trying to shore up the top of the dome and just kind of repair the bottom of it where it kind of fell apart in transit. And in the process, like one whole side of it just kind of caved in. Um, so I'm a little stressed about that because I want to make it so it's stable, but I mean, it's stable if it just sits there, like most Lego sets. Um, it'll sit there if it's just unbothered, but my concern is like people will bump a table or something like that. Mason, I am drinking Wild Basin. It's a, a boozy, sparkly water. It's, it's White Claw, basically. Um, but it's very tasty. They've, their flavors are a little better than, I think, White Claw. White Claw is kind of sugary. Um, so these are really nice. They're kind of smooth. Um, I haven't drank like eight of them to know how much it'll mess me up, but um, one is good. You know, one or two is fine. I know I said I was drinking beer tonight, but I'm out of beer in the fridge currently, so. But we are going to Flick's Brew House tonight to see the Lion King. Oh, I needed to put a bunch of stuff in here. Um, 
Jumping the gun. So I'm gonna have a few uh, beer or two there. Cause I like their beers. Um, I like their 10 day Scottish ale and I like their, uh, the choc chocolate Umbra stout. That's always good. Uh, wow, there's some really small pieces in this. So I'm hoping, I'm kind of building over here and I know people can't really see that. So I'm gonna try to focus more on the camera. So um, these, we did the uh, power hour at a friend's house. And for those who aren't aware of power hours, it's uh, you watch movies or you watch one minute clips for an hour. And every time a minute goes by, where the heck are these? Well, I don't see them. Je ne sais pas. Every time a minute clip goes by, you take a shot of beer. You take a 1.25 ounce shot, regular shot of beer. And by the end, you should have imbibed seven and one quarters beer in an hour. So it's, what's up, Ozzy Bricks? How's it going? Thanks for dropping by. Um, so after an hour, you've drank one or seven point however many beers, and it's really, really evil. It'll really mess you up. Um, but the thing is, I'm kind of an overweight drinker, so I don't get as drunk as other people, but I get really full. I mean, that's a lot of liquid to put in your belly in an hour. Um, so we thought this year, hey, we'll try these uh, sparkling waters. That shouldn't be too problem. Too problem. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. Oh, it was, it was bad. It was bad. First of all, uh, we went with our neighbors and they got really messed up. Um, so did Beth a little bit. But then the next day, because it's so sugary and it's vodka, it's just the worst hangover. And I think that day I had to move all my stuff um, to Brick Fiesta. So like I woke up with a hangover and like immediately started, like people came over to my house and were asking how to load up the Capitol. I'm like, don't, just don't even breathe on me. Just get out of, you know, I had such a hangover. But we all survived. And the older we get, I don't think happy hour, or happy hour, I don't think power hour is probably gonna be in our future too much longer. It's a lot of fun. We may just, it may just be a thing where we get together and watch these funny videos. Um, because it is a good time to be had with friends. <clears throat> I'm having a really hard time deciphering some of these pieces. Those aren't brackets, those are bricks with studs. And then shiny or pearl shiny. Boop. Pearl shiny, whatnots in there. Oh no. It's the worst when you drop a one by one. I'm just gonna spin out of control and lose it forever. Are these guys. So yeah, the next micro fighter build will be punishing one and then um, the ATAP. I think I'm gonna try to order the bricks. I probably won't be able to do that until next Thursday because it takes a while for the bricks to get in on BrickLink. Yes, the bags are individually numbered. So it says there are 18. There are 18 numbers, which means there are, but there's like two of every number almost. So it's almost like there's 24 bags. It's just mind blowing how big this thing is. So I'm super grateful to um, Iceberg Bricks again for running that contest because this is fantastic. Um, I normally don't think I would have got this set for myself, even though I have kind of a small Statue of Liberty collection with the keychain and the brick heads and the architecture set. This would go really nicely. It'll be kind of a centerpiece and I can put those around it. And it's got a lot of minifigures in it, so I'm kind of happy with this. I'm super jazzed that he was able to run that show and uh, get it out. Uh, let's see. How does this go? It goes out like this. Flush against that wall? I guess so. Yep. Orientation's a bit weird for me sometimes, which is also weird because I'm an artist. You would think spatial awareness would be a 
would not be a problem, but I'm trying to build backwards here. Oh, you know what? The camera is how it looks in the instructions. This I can handle. So let's see, this guy goes here. And this guy goes here. All right. Um, yeah, so normally this isn't a set I'd get. I wouldn't, I haven't got a whole lot of, of the, um, Yeah, it's not a free-for-all. Um, and no, Josh, I'm not gonna dump it all into a, a pot and then just sort through it and go, all right, uh, hunting for the next brick. Let's do this. All right, I can already tell that's gonna be off. It's because that goes there. Haha, -ha, I win. See, I'm a little worried too because this is a lot of cool uh, colored pieces in it that I would normally use for other stuff. But I wouldn't. I don't want to. Uh, um, I don't want to take this all apart just to get to it. Um, but it lets me know that I can order them from. I can order them on Bricklink now. Uh, question: What is the coolest printed brick? Dallas. Hi, Dallas. Thanks for joining me. If you're actually on, I know people bounce in and out on Facebook. What's the coolest printed brick you've come across in the set so far? I haven't. These are all stickers. There hasn't been a printed brick in the lot. I mean, that's a sticker. That's a sticker. That's a sticker. No printed bricks yet. These gas pumps in there, those are stickers. A little sign up there, those are stickers. Yeah. The newspaper and the police, can't really see it. Flip it over. That newspaper that's got what looks like Harley Quinn on it. Um, yeah, um, let me see if this one is. This one might be. Nope, that's a sticker too. Uh, so, yeah, fully stickered. Um, you might have some printed ones later, but I haven't seen any so far. Ooh, there's a piece that I'm missing. Yeah, that had an arrow to it. How's that look? Burp, 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 burp. That goes on top of this guy. Like that. Because reasons. No, the coffee cups aren't printed. They are really great molds, and I'm gonna switch to uh, the full camera so you can see this camera's a little better. It's got the nice little uh, plastic uh, sippy cup thing on it, but it's not it doesn't have like any logos or anything on it, which, you know, kind of a shame, but whatever. Um, I almost would rather have like a, a, two, a one by one round with just like a lid on it with something printed around it. But I mean, they're kind of cool. All right, so. I'm gonna put a three. Y'all. These guys, y'all. I will say that building this set right now is very pleasing to me because I um, was working very hard on the Capitol roof and because I have not built it properly or have not designed it properly, the, uh, um, the walls kind of do this nonsense, right? Because they're not, they're not built up, they're very thin walls, it's just like one buys all the way up. So when I put the roof on, the roof has to be kind of tweaked and squeezed and whatever, which means everything built on it is kind of out of joint. Um, so when I try to do stuff on top of it, it's just a pain in the butt. Um, everything kind of squeezes the wrong way and uh, things pop off and there's no pressure to be able to like push down on stuff to get it to stick. So I have to have my hand underneath it and push it down like a sandwich and it's blah. It's, I mean, it's gonna get done. I got a month to do it. I got a little over a month to do it. Um, and I, th I think I'll have enough time to get it done. Um, but I'm just stressed because the dome fell apart and I don't know if I'm gonna have everything, all the parts that I need. So we'll see. I don't, I, it's to the point where if I had like two good solid days, I could probably get the whole thing done. 
Um, ooh, got some late 90s industrial kind of stuff going on. A little stabbing westward, maybe. Sounding-ish. Drink some fountain. Stabbing westward. I had this Mandela moment the other day where I was for sh I thought for sure I knew. I'm gonna have to turn this around because I'm not being able to see exactly what is going on. There's this weird set of bricks that I gotta put this on. Doubt, 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 doubt. I had a weird Mandela moment the other day. I was, I'm a, I wouldn't say a huge industrial fan, but like the 90s were very good to me um, in terms of music. I was, I was going to KMFDM concerts and Nine Inch Nail concerts and uh, Dink shows and whatever, where, whatever I could go to really. And there was a, there's a band called Stabbing Westward, which was a Trent Reznor um, produced band. And there was a song, and now I've completely lost it anyway, so the story's going to be meaningless. But there was a song that I thought Stabbing Westward did, and I was like, oh, what was the name? And Beth and I were having this conversation. I was like, well, what was the name of that song that Stabbing Westward did? And she named off a couple, and I was like, no, it wasn't that, it wasn't that. So finally I started looking around, and I realized that the band Stabbing Westward, I was like, I've never heard this band before. I've never listened to this band before. And it turned out the... Uh, the song that I had remembered was some like one hit wonder, like it kind of was somewhere in between Stabbing Westward and like Blue Ocean or something. Um, it was just, it, was, it wasn't a bad song, but I mean, I was really mad at myself for thinking that was a different band. And so I was like, what was I thinking of? Who was that? I have those moments periodically and I'm sure everybody else does as well. So every once in a while I'll go back and I'll listen to, uh, I'll just get downward spiral and start jamming out and then I realize that I was angry in college. Was very, very angry. I wanna get a ton of these in yellow so I can make a uh, sky crane or a, um, yeah, sky crane. Because I want to have construction sites on modular cities. I think modular cities that are all built is kind of, um, oh, we lost our Mohawk guy is kind of a, uh, a cop-out. I think we need to have construction. I live in Austin. For those of you who are watching who aren't in Austin, I live in Austin, and we're constantly under construction, as I'm sure most cities are. So to have sky cranes and cones and trucks and crap all over the place, I think would be more realistic. Um, don't at me with any hatred towards construction. Oh, this is a cool piece too. I've never really used these pieces, but I have them in a design for a um, microfighter, for uh, Anakin's microfighter. Actually, no. Yes. No. I have them in orange for Sebulba's microfighter. And I can't wait to build that one because it's adorable. There's a couple of the microfighters that I designed where I just... I can't believe that I did it. It's, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but they are fun as heck. And I can't wait to build them. Are you kidding? This is another sticker. 41, or, yeah, 41. And I'm old, so I can't really see the thing. Take care of your eyes, kids. There it is, 41. What a weird sticker. Again. Not that I expect these all to be printed, but I mean, maybe pick one to be printed. That just seems weird. A little eyeball. Some sort of canister. Uh, okay. What's up, kitty? Um, okay, so I need a ball joint in there. If I can find it. Oh, it's gray. There it is. Ooh, I have not yet had the pleasure of working with this piece. Narc, narc, narc. 
And then that guy. Oh, sexy. And one of these guys. Boink. Oh, that's why I keep knocking into him, because I keep... Blurp. Where's that guy go? That can't be right. Oh, here. So he goes there. And then along with that guy. I think people want to see you more than the build cat. What do you think? The cat's name is Fizzgig because I am a child of the 80s. Uh, I need a one by one green brick. Oh, there it is. And uh, when, I was a, when I was a kid, we had a cat named Penfold, also because I'm a child of the 80s. And uh, I thought, you know what? Penfold's a great name, but at some point I need an animal that's named Fizzgig. So here's another thing. This shirt is like, I'm swimming in this stupid thing. Um, who here is excited for the Dark Crystal Netflix TV show? Normally I wouldn't be. I'll tell you why. Because I think remakes in the most part are kind of cash grabby um, pieces of junk that aren't very good. Um, I just, I'm not, I haven't, I haven't been thrilled with like most. They're, you know, they're not bad, but they're not excellent. And of course, they're straight to Hollywood kind of things where, you know, it's you're trying to cram an entire giant story into two hours or something, especially with books. But I think the um, Dark Crystal sequel will be really kind of cool. Hi, Winter. I don't know at what point you joined, but thanks for stopping by. I hope to see you guys on Sunday, or Saturday, whenever the potluck thing is. Then. I will see you then. <clears throat> Alright, making progress. Cooking with gas. Hey, stop it. Oh, I'm missing a part. Yes, kitty, hi. Okay, look, if you're gonna scratch yourself, don't use my headphone cord. Stop it. Stupid cat. Oh, 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 oh. Almost a tragedy. Okay. This is the exciting part of the stream, where I build in silence forever. This is why I have Beth on the chat with me sometimes. It gives me a reason to talk. And then I don't forget that there are actually other people watching. Um, where does all that go? Not like I have a problem talking. But... Burp, 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 burp. Let's see if I can do this without looking at it. Is that right? And then this guy goes here. And then that guy goes next to it. It's hard to kind of tell what you're doing if you can't see your own hands. And this guy goes next to this guy. Yeah, uh, I totally agree, um, Mason. Um, the If you guys don't know, hi, Laura. How are you? Thanks for stopping by. Um, if you guys haven't seen, and I'm sorry, this keeps washing out. If you guys haven't seen, and I don't know where you can find it anymore, but if you haven't seen the Tron Uprising cartoon that was on Netflix, it is ridiculously good it is so good like I had no expectations going into it 
Um, I was really looking forward to, and I forget, did it come out before or after Uprising? I think it came out after. I'm pretty sure it came out after. Um, so we were all kind of like uh, waiting for a third part because uh, Tron Uprising wasn't, or Tron Legacy, or yeah, Tron, now I can't remember the titles. The theatrical movie was not awful. It wasn't great, but it wasn't awful. I mean, I enjoyed it. But at the same time, I'm like, this isn't going to hold up. It's a little weird. I know people aren't going to get it. Um, there was a bit of kind of leap of faith kind of stuff with the IOs. Um, oh, man, I haven't seen these pieces in forever. I have a ton of these from, like, Blacktron and Futron days, but I, I don't see them a lot anymore. So speaking of Blacktron and Futron, you know, the music is kind of kicking at 80s school. So anyway... Um, Oh, that's in between the points. Is that gonna fit? Is that how it works? Nope, over here. I'm gonna stop talking while I figure out how to do this right here without actually being able to see it. All right, ta-da. So, um, it was after, yeah. So it came out after, and I think they were kind of like trying to it, this was almost a way of saying, we're not going to make a third Tron movie, but here we'll fill in some of the story for you by doing this. And it actually was awesome. Um, at first, I was a little worried because it uh, the animation was sort of that computerized, stylistic. Um, it's supposed to look like a computer, but it's... I mean, it's done by a computer, but it's supposed to be like faux cell shading or something. And they were all really lanky and angular and stylized, like Ian Flux. Um, so I was a little worried that it was going to be like really junky. But I, after watching it, like the first episode, I'm like, I am hooked on this. This is great. And the cast was amazing. Um, first of all, the main character was voiced by uh, Elijah Wood. And then they had Lance Hendrickson and Mandy Moore and Paul Rubens and... I think Bruce Boxleitner actually did Tron. I don't know who did Clue. I don't know if they got Jeff Bridges to do Clue and um, I don't think Flynn showed up, but he might have. Um, and the, the guy who played the um, the garage owner was a big name too, and I can't remember what his name is now. But I mean, it was just, I was floored how good this was. And I was really mad when it was over because I was like, no, now I want more. <laughs> and go towards that, and then boom, and then this guy goes there. Some really weird detail along there. All right, what time is it? We've got plenty of time. We're rolling. Yeah, this is just a monster of a build. I don't know how or when I'm going to get it done. I don't want to keep using this as a streaming thing because I kind of want to like work on it in my own time. But I think Clancy Brown, Clancy Brown, man. Clancy Brown can be in anything. He is just awesome. He will always be the Kurgan. Is that right? The Kurgan? The, um, yeah, Kurgan. I'm saying that right, right? And yes, he's Mr. Krabs. But he will always be, to me, the, um, the Cossack, the uh, bad guy from um, Highlander. I think his name was Kurgan. Uh, nope, there it is right there. I just saw it. Keep knocking these guys over. Mr. Krabs, SpongeBob. He was also in, I, I got overly excited about the fact that he was in Lost for like half a minute. Um, that was pretty cool. And I forget what season that was, but it was like, he showed up when they finally got into the hatch and he and uh, Desmond were like working together and it was just, it was so good. 
He was in like Earth 2099 or whatever that Earth 2 or it was a science fiction show where he was like kind of, I don't, I don't remember if he was the commander, but he was like the ship pilot or the captain or something. Man, there's a show I'd like to go back and watch. Hey, you know what show uh, I just got done binging that doesn't hold up but at the same time holds up awesomely? Is Babylon 5. Um, it is a wickedly dated show. Like the computer graphics on it are so bad. But I mean, it was late 90s. Um, it was so bad. Are these supposed to be like loosely on there? Okay, this kind of building stuff, I don't know if you can really see this, but like it's, this whole thing is just to get maybe a texture over here, you know, or to get, I don't know. I don't know why that's in there. Get a, Yes, Carnival. Oh my God. There's a show that was... Mason, you and I need to hang out, man, because that, that effing show, I loved the, the concept of it. It totally went off the rails. It was like not well handled, and the ending was junk, and they didn't, they didn't treat it right. But man, that started off as a great show. And that made me actually like, um, what's his name, a lot. Um, the guy who's in Terminator. I keep wanting to call him Benjamin because that was his character name in Carnival. Um, I forget what his name is. Anyway, the, probably the whole reason I actually watched Terminator. All right, I am missing or I'm not seeing this little, ah, oh, there it is. Yeah, that show was really cool and it had the weird midget guy, or I'm sorry, the weird small dude from Twin Peaks. That show was weird AF. It was so good. I got a blue thing. Yeah, so um, B5 is. Uh, so B5, I started rewatching it and I thought, yeah, yeah, I, I remember this show. This was good when I was watching it because I'd watch it. Uh, it was, came out about the same time as X Files. And I remember having watch parties in college where we'd watch X-Files and Babylon 5. Turns out, I never watched Babylon 5. I just remember it being on because I think what had happened was it came on right before, this is interesting, broom and wheel. It came on right before X-Files, so we would watch like the last 10 minutes of it before X-Files started. So I just thought I knew what it was and I think some of my friends were watching it at the time too. Oh. I wish I could see the parts like instantly. There it is. Okay. So it turns out when I went back and rewatched it, I was like, I have never actually seen this show. So it was kind of new. There's two of those, huh? Um, I do remember like the first, most of the first season. Um, and, um, excuse me. It, uh, oh, this is a barbell. That's so great. So this is a barbell in post-apocalyptic world because it goes in apparently what is going to be the gym. Oh, that, okay. So here we go. Punching bag. That's a spiked punching bag. And this is a bench. And there's your gym. I'm going to put this on here. Nice. Can't see that really well, maybe. There's your bench with the barbell on it and a little punching bag up in the corner here. That's pretty hip. Um, no, I liked Sequest. Sequest was great, but again, Sequest died at the end of it. Like it was, like they gave up after like the first season. I think Sequest went, this is a great first season. Nobody thought it would go anywhere. And then they tried a second season and it was just terrible. It was not good. Um, but I did like that. Pour some out Jonathan Brandis. Um, but no, so Babylon 5. Um, had like supervising assistance from Harlan Ellis. He didn't like write it or direct it or anything, but I mean it was J. Michael Straczynski and he had a pretty good track record of TV. And Harlan Ellis, which is, he's like a science fiction juggernaut. And uh, it was like, it was ambitious. The scope was enormous and it was just not, oh, I missed a box over here. 
But the first couple episodes were like, I can imagine what um, earlier generations, like my parents or whatever, would have thought watching OT Star Trek or OS original series. Yeah, original series Star Trek because it was just campy and weirdly acted. Not like badly acted, but like weirdly acted. Like if I were to see it in... If I went to somebody's house and watched it with like true motion interpolation or something. Um, sorry, Laura, I have been not watching you on the chat over here. You need to do a Lego. Hi, Rain. How's it going? Do a Lego uh, Nosh Waston Castle live. I'd watch the whole thing. I'd buy one and do it myself, but I can't afford it. So which one is that? I don't know. I don't know what that castle is. I'd have to look it up. This one is the, sorry, this one is the, um, Welcome to Apocalypseburg from Lego Movie 2. And I don't honestly know how much of the actual set you see, and then there's a kitty over here, how much of the city you see in the movie, but this is where like their stronghold is kind of thing. Because um, when this set came out, I'm like, I don't remember seeing that in the movie, but I don't know. I may have overlooked it. So yeah, send me um, information on that castle. The Nushwas. New Schwanstein Castle. Um, if it's affordable, I'll get it and I'll do it. If it's as big as this one, I mean, this is going to take, if I just did this one, I can do two bags of, uh, a, at a time. This is going to take like a month and a half to do. And I'm, I don't know that I'll wait a month and a half to do it. We'll see. So yes, uh, Mason, Babylon 5, I would give it a shot, but you really got to push through that first season. It's really awkward and uncomfortable how bad it is. Um, like acting and story wise but in terms of kind of the idea of where they're going it's really interesting um, I mean I liked it Beth gave me funny looks because she's like what the hell are you watching I'm like I'm watching Babylon 5 one thing I will say is some of the space battle scenes I really got into them but it just seemed too like some of the space battles were really sort of what? Oh. Um, like every ship was a glass cannon. Like they were either super powerful or they just exploded. Like there was no hanging in a firefight or something like that. It's just like, yep, we're all going to die. Uh, what's it on? Uh, it's, it's on Prime. And there are a couple movies that go with it, but I wouldn't really worry about watching the movies. And I think you have to buy a couple of the movies anyway, so... It's kind of not worth doing that. I watched like one of them and I'm like, meh, it's all right. It didn't really add or detract to the story. I mean, it added a little bit, but, um, and it's kind of like, to me, it's a bit like Firefly, not Firefly, uh, Farscape in that, um, I'm going to see it next summer. I'll send you the link. Oh, you mean like design the castle and build it? Yeah, um, if somebody hasn't, here's the thing, if somebody hasn't done it already, I'll do it. But if it's something that like somebody's already built, I'm gonna be like, nah, that one's good. That's, that's good, I'll worry about somebody else building it later. Um, does this have, that's weird. I've got another piece here, but it's only, did I forget a, oh, I totally did. See, you guys are keeping me from, I'm totally distracted. And I'm missing all kinds of stuff here. Your fault, I'm all blaming you. Wow, I like missed a lot. So this guy goes here, way inside there. Yeah, I'll design it if it's uh, something um, that nobody's done or something like that. That'd be kind of fun because I'm going to need a project after the Capitol. And um, I have an idea to do, I was going to do a, um, uh, the, uh, the uh, rest of the um, UT tower, so the main building of the UT tower. And then um, I had an idea for a showpiece for future conventions in uh, sort of a 
brick built, big statue maquette style. Um, I'm probably, I don't know if I'm saying too much by saying this, but giving it away. But a, um, I want to do a uh, Ray and Kylo statue of that scene where they're in the forest and they're like holding each other's lightsabers and one's way up in the other and the other one's burning down into the snow. Um, oh, this chair cushion's giving me problems. I love that scene. I think it's iconic and I think it would be neat to like light up the lightsabers and maybe even put like a, like a micro smoke machine underneath it so it's like burning the snow or something like that. And I've started doing designs for it and I can't tell how big the scale is going to be because I need to know how big a lightsaber needs to be to put lights in it. and So it's, it's going to be a while until I get that figured out. But another big architectural thing would be fun to do too. So get pictures and send them to me when you go. Long term stuff, man. I love it. So yeah, Farscape. Uh, it, the aliens kind of felt Farscape-ish in that they weren't... They were very well done, but they were still kind of Star Trek-y rubber mask kind of thing. But there's one called the Vorlons. There's a Vorlon alien that was just, the way it talked and the way it, the way they created it was just fantastic. And it reminded me a lot of Farscape. And uh, there's another show that I don't think got, I think it did well. I think uh, enough people liked it, but man, that was a great show. Um, Black. That's why I'm excited about um, the Netflix version of Dark Crystal because I think as long as it's a um, Henson property, if the Henson designers are still behind it, and I don't think Brian Froud is still alive, I don't know that for sure, but if he's at all involved in like any of the artistic stuff, it's going to be great. It's going to be just amazing. And I like the trailer for it looked really good, or the teaser for it. That's supposed to go in too. Yoink, yoink, yoink. All right, turn it back around so you can all see. This gets a sign, ta-da. I don't know what that says, Brick Squad, Brick SQ. So yeah, that's probably the gym. You go in the door over here, I haven't put the door in yet. La, la, la. What's up, Jamie? How's it going? So, for y'all in YouTube, you don't see like the people joining in Facebook and what, and vice versa. I've been trying to figure out how um, to get Restream to put. They said they've got their chat figured out so where. Everybody should be able to see everybody, but they haven't been able to integrate Facebook for some reason, so I'm, I'm kind of cheesed at that. Because I keep have multiple sites open and whatever. Oh, the uh, Talon? Yeah, so uh, Moira's offspring in the show, Moira's a living ship, and she has a baby later on, and it's called Talon, and it is is it, it's a gunship and it's super awesome looking. I'd be surprised if somebody hadn't built that already because that, that's a really cool ship. I actually kind of wanted to do, I want to do a micro fighter of Moira um, to see if I could do it because it's a weird looking ship. I want to kind of get away from Star Wars ships per se and start doing other science fiction micro fighters. I think that'd be fun. Um, really? Oh, that is a little piece. Wow, this is getting back to like old school Lego where they're like, here's 27 pieces, figure out where they go. I'm like, I like it, but I'm gonna be missing a lot of stuff. This is also a giant set, so I'm sure they had to save on how big to do the uh, instruction booklet. Uh, yeah, so if you haven't seen uh, Farscape, for you science fiction fans out there, really give it a shot. It's, it's super great. You can watch it all in like a weekend. Well, maybe not a weekend. Maybe a couple weeks, because it's like three seasons in a movie or four seasons in a movie or something like that. We've moved to White Claw. What camera am I on? Black Cherry. 
Um, oh, get a pole here. Where did that go? Building everything backwards is a little weird. Make sure I got everything. Uh, new science fiction stuff. Oh, you know what's coming up? Um, I think this fall is season four of um, Expanse. I think that's coming up. I'm super excited about that. On Prime. Because Sci-Fi Channel is a bunch of douchebags. They do not know how to run a science fiction property properly. They just do not know. Bye, Laura. Thanks for coming by. And I'll take a look at that, uh, the link for the picture. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And if you're still here, I'll be on Sunday too. So come back Sunday. Uh, yeah, so Expanse should be, and I, I don't know. Maybe it's already coming on and I missed out or whatever. I was part of the whole, I won't say part of, but I stayed up all night with the Twitter peoples watching them recount or going into like the save the, save the expanse thing with um, Amazon. That was a lot of fun. Every once in a while, Oh, I'm not going to be able to see this. Oh, what side is that on? On this side? Okay, interesting. Just the one? Yep. <laughs> okay. Well, broke that. I need a better rig. So... I hate asking this, but I've got a PayPal link in the description. What I'd really like to have is a nice tripod, and then I could put my phone up on it and stream from my phone instead of using this crappy webcam. But I can—I mean, I can go get one. They're twenty bucks. But you know, while it's there, like, comment, and subscribe. Link. My phone is going nuts. Somebody texting me. Hope it's not important. Cause I'm busy, yo. Why are you texting me? Not watching my stuff. So you all are in um, good standing right now with this channel because normally at this point I'm talking to myself. I'm always talking to myself, but in a lot of cases, I'm just designing in studio, and it's just me sitting there going, nah, that's not going to work. Nah, that's not going to work. Nah, why don't we try this part? Why do they make this part in this color? Blah, blah, blah. Um, there's another channel I watch, um, Princess Butter Cow or something like that, and she does kind of a lot of the same things. She games and designs in studio, and... Uh, I was watching her the other day and it was basically me and her like freaking out over what parts to use. She's like, I don't know what part to use here. She's like, I want to use this one. She's like, no, it's too expensive. All right, it's looking nice, looking good. So I got one new subscriber off the um, chat for the Apollo 11 launch thing. I don't know if he's here or not. If he is here, hi Luke. Um, I don't know if his real name, but his screen name is Luke Dyson, which I just think is like a ridiculously cool name. It sounds like a video game character name. Uh oh, here we go. About to drop some bass. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? Yep, here it comes. It's a little transformer sex for y'all going on here. 
Can I skip songs? Hey, Pretzel, can I skip songs? I'm not a huge fan of this, but whatever. That's better. A little chill. Let's just be chill. Everybody, everybody chill out. We don't need to be angry. This may be a little too chill or a little too happy, a little too up with people. But we'll roll with it. It's better than bleeding ear. And I don't mean to be, I, I'm okay with some of that. I don't want to sound like an old man, but I'd rather have my chip tune than my, my, my step. Ooh, that's neat. Where does that go? So this goes around on the back side here. Back side, back side. It's over here somewhere. Uh-oh, can't really tell. That way, that way. Cool. And then we've got, oh, you know what? We could almost get to bag four. And then I'll have to finish it all tonight later on my own. Or I'll go see a movie and then I'll do a unscheduled live stream and we'll just finish it up tonight. Although I should be building in the capital. Because that monster is never going to get done. Da 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 da. So bitter. Oh, you know what? It's gonna be weird on me and stick a bunch of parts on here that, yeah, stupid thing. So here. I don't know what it's supposed to be closer to. Can't really tell from here. That. All right, there's another. Oh, holy crap. That's a good thing I looked. <laughs> All right, I can't see what I'm doing, so I'm gonna have to turn this around. Sorry, everybody. I'll spin it back around in a second, you'll see it. What's the largest set I've ever completed in one sitting? Um, I worked on, I think it was the So I have the, you saw the Mac Anthem when you came over. I think that one I did in one sitting. Um, but it was like, I woke up at like seven in the morning and just worked all day to kind of do it. And that, I mean, that's a big effing set. Um, I mean, even some of the cars, like the creator cars, I'll like space it out over two days, but some of them, some of them I got done like right away. Ooh, I like this song, whatever it is. Oh, are you kidding me? That's a lot of pieces. I mean, they're all small. There's your extra pieces for that bag. So I got some handcuffs and I got one of these epaulets, spiked epaulets, nice trans pieces. Yeah, that all works out. That all tracks. Put them in my spare piece bucket, which still has spare pieces from Voltron too. You need to work on that. All right, bag four. Yeah, the Mac Anthem was a super fun set to work on. And um, it wasn't, it was like a good mix. Did that piss everybody off? It was a good mix of, um, Technic and brick building. But I'm never taking that monster apart because there's no way some of those things are ever coming apart. Um, the people who do Technic builds are just masochists. Because there's a lot of stuff that I'm like, I'm, this is gonna stay like this forever. And they all involve these stupid things. I'm gonna put some stuff in here and then close it up with some pins and then F you. Because that's the way Technic rolls. Oh, we're going for another base plate here. So I'm gonna put this guy aside because this is gonna become another whole section.
Weird, I got a new bag, but no new figure. How did I get a figure out of that? So yeah, in about 15 minutes, I'm gonna cut it off. Maybe a little longer, depends. But we're gonna go see um, Lion King. And Beth is ridiculously happy to go see this movie. I am excited. I am fairly excited, not as excited. Um, I mean, I have kids and when The Lion King came out, we saw it. Actually, we didn't see it when they were kids because it came out before they were born. But I saw it a lot when they were kids because we had all the Disney movies on DVD, which tells you how old I am that my kids were watching Lion King on DVD. And it was one of their favorites. So when the movie came out, I'm like, do you guys want to go see this? And they're like, no. I'm like, really? It's not like a childhood memory? And they're like, no, we barely remember it. I'm like, all right, fair enough. Well, I'm going to go see it without you. Although I will go see most, um, if not all, Marvel movies with my son. Oh, I hate when they do this. Because I can't tell. One, two, one, two three. Um, because he is a giant Marvel nerd like I am. Um, his favorite character, I think, not only is Spider-Man, but Nova of all characters, which I find really interesting. I don't know why either. I haven't asked him. I should ask him. Hey, Greg, why is Nova your favorite character? He doesn't watch this. He was on this one time when I was building a TIE bomber and um, he just sat in the side over here, like, or I was in my drawing area, and he just sat over there uh, building out pieces, or using pieces to build other things. I was like, man, what are you doing? Get off. He's like, yeah, you need this, and you need this. So this is going pretty fast, and I'm going to F it up because I'm going so fast. I'm going to miss pieces. So I forgot who I was talking to today, and it may have just been a video, or I may have been just reading something, but somebody was saying, you, you don't, I forget how it was phrased now, but it was basically, um, if, you, if you do the thing that you have passion for, for the rest, I mean, it's this typical phrase of, if you do the thing you love, the rest of your life won't feel like you're doing work. And it won't, you know, it won't seem like so much time has gone by and you won't feel stressed and all that kind of nonsense. But um, I kept thinking, I will avoid doing other things so I can do Lego. And it doesn't have to be building. It can be designing, it can be buying parts, it can be organizing wanted lists. It can be any manner of like, you know, creative process. So um, I did have a dark age as most people do, um, but I've always had Lego. And, uh, but I, I took a time to do some drawing. Um, I thought I was gonna get into comic books, but it turns out that unless you wanna spend uh, your entire waking life drawing, you're never gonna make it as a professional comic book artist. Now this is back in like the mid 90s, like right as Image Comics was getting started. So it was really hard to kind of get into the business still. But now it's like you could be your own, um, you could be your own publisher. Not you won't get a lot of readers maybe, but you could be your own publisher. So it's changed a lot. And I think if I were to still do it now, I'd probably be a little better off. But Back in like 2005, um, I was I was this close to like dropping everything and just becoming a comic book artist. And I'm kind of glad I didn't because then I don't think I'd be here. Because I really think that I am doing better here than I am doing uh, artwork. And I still, do, don't get me wrong, I still occasionally do commissions and stuff for people, um, which reminds me I gotta do something for um, Beth's family um, and I, I spent some time doing 
robot portraits where I would find people or people would send me photos and I would draw them as a robot. And then time lapse uh, the, uh, the process. And that worked for a little while and people seemed interested in that, but it, that only went so far and then it really kind of dropped off after that. Um, and so now I'm doing this again because I was like, you know what, I'm a grown up, I have disposable income, I'm gonna get back into Lego. And I kind of did right as Star Wars hit. Um, I started buying everything Star Wars related. And then it just kind of became a downward spiral after that. Yeah, that's not good. So that's what brought me here to doing stupid things like building the entire capital, Texas Capitol building, and being stressed about it not working. But it'll get done. I have faith. And then either the twenty, the nineteenth or the twenty-sixth, it'll go into the visitor center. And after that, people can go see it if they want. And I don't know if there's going to be like an opening or anything like that because um, they haven't told me anything. So we'll figure it out. But I'm excited. After all this time of being an artist, I finally have something. I have an exhibit in a museum that has nothing to do with art. Uh, it has nothing to do with drawing or painting. I think that's kind of funny. Plus, I think it's great for uh, kids to see that that kind of stuff can be done too. And I, I, I know it sounds cheesy and it was the answer that I gave one of the reporters at Brick Fiesta, but I was like, kids can see this and go, you know what? I play with Legos now. There's there's, there's room for me to be able to do this when I'm an adult. To be able to grow up and play with bricks and do what I like doing. Oh, I don't like when they do this. There's nothing to connect it. Just put it in there. I think that's great. And I hope more kids see that and realize that and don't give up doing. And this music goes good with the hopeful message. Hey man, do what you like doing. Stay true to you, man. Okay, so I don't know who else is left watching, but oh, we got like 13 minutes or so, we're good. My phone's blown up. If anybody's texting me, I'm busy. Building a whole new section of the ground in here. So I used to listen to this music and I could probably bring it back up because the guy said I could listen to it and if anything came up, it would just go to, oh man, that's barely on there. It would just go to him, but there's a, uh, a musician that I like listening to named Lukash and, oh, really? Did I mess that up that bad? I don't think so. I think that was different. No, I guess not. All right. Um, he does chiptune music, and it's just fantastic. And I used, uh, I found him because of the uh, robot portraits I was doing. Purple, purple brick, purple brick. Um, the robot portraits I was doing, I would need to look up music to put with the videos. And I found his music on a site called Jamendo, which is a French site that um, offers some royalty-free music. So you could, you know, as long as you offered, you know, the, the credit in your description of whatever you're doing, you could use it. Is that all of it? That was a lot in that one bit. So I found his site, and it sounds a lot like this. It's a lot of video game stuff. He does a lot of the programming of it off uh, just tooling the sounds through Game Boys and the mixing and that they have in Game Boys. Um, but it sounds a lot like this. It's really good. I like it a lot. Especially considering it's very hopeful sounding music and happy music <coughs> while being a bit futuristic.
very danceable. I can get behind it. But yeah, look him up. Lukash. It's L-U-K-H-A-S-H. -H or L-U-H-K-A-S-H. -H. Can't remember if it's Lukash or Lu... Huh. L-U-H-K-A-S-H. -H. I'll post the description later. Ooh, what? Interesting. Oh, I see. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, is that a printed tile? Yes. Where is it? Who asked? First printed tile. It is an egg, I think. Fried egg? Yeah, fried egg. Fried egg tile. I don't even know where that sits. Of course, it sits in a weird little area in here. Two down from that, right there. What a weird place to put that. It's gonna be buried. All right, weirdo designers. Here, here's 57 two by three tan bricks. Just put them on there somewhere. So I hope everybody is having a good time watching. I hope this is on in the background while you're doing some other work, building a costume, drinking the beer, making dinner. Um, if you would, let your friends know, share the link. Get some other uh, Lego builders do coming on in here. I really liked the um, um, the 72 hour stream. That was a lot of fun. I met a, uh, quite a few people. It was nice going to Brick Fiesta. Um, Synthetic Mason was there. That was really good. Uh, Josh, I met Josh there. Got him kind of interested in the lug, which was great. Um, so let's get some more people going in here, man. Uh, and then there's an arm on a clip. Yup. It's three over. I'm talking to myself now. Make sure I got the right numbers. Very anal retentive about that. Oh, and you know what? I'm even gonna do, I'm not even gonna switch it because it had it like this in the instructions. Look at that. Yeah, I've never seen that egg tile before. That's pretty nice. I wish I had more of them. So one thing I am not good at, but I would really love to be involved in is um, designing interiors. Like I just saw a post today and I forget who posted it. Let's turn this around. Um, they just posted like, I mean, it's like those, here's a 1970s living room, that kind of nonsense. Those just crack me up. They're so good. The way they create the furniture and the, the look of the thing. Two, 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 got that. It's just fantastic. And I love the detail. I love making uh, offices. I love the idea of making offices with lamps and trash cans. I don't know why, I just find that stuff fascinating. I'm not good at it. But that's probably because I just haven't done it a whole lot. I'd like to do more of those things. Um, so, I don't know. It'd be nice to try out. What's up, Josh? Haven't seen you in forever, man. So now I got three Joshes that I gotta worry about. Other Josh in Facebook uh, is an old uh, gaming friend. I say gaming friend. We did a Dungeons and Dragons campaign together for a little bit until I decided real life was getting in the way and I had to stop. And then our DM moved to New York. Um, and I haven't really gone back to it. But how you doing, man? I hope things are going well for you.
Ah. <clears throat> oh, what time is it? Oh, we're getting close to the end. Got five minutes. So, I'm gonna wrap things up. Not really. I'm gonna talk until the very last second, because that's what we do. I am not gonna be able to finish this build tonight, though. Boy, they cram a lot into one. I like it. That's gonna be stuff later to clip into the other build. That, 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 two of those. Oh. So, Josh, Josh, local Josh. Oh, crap, Josh G. Um, oh no, it wasn't you that gave me those. Never mind. it was Mevitz, Mevitz Bricks. I meant to tell Mevitz that I didn't need the tan, the sand green cheese wedges, but I will use them to give it a nice look on the roof because I didn't design it with those because I don't think those existed at the time. But I am gonna use those. Oh goodness, there's a lot going on here. There's that guy. And that guy. Oh man, you know what? I like the beat on this one, but this song is just kind of I don't like, uh, I'm not happy with any of this music today. Okay, I think that's good. Ooh, now we're gonna cover it. All plates, all the time. That guy. This guy. There's a lot going on. Oh man, if this gets covered, Yeah, if they just didn't have any lyrics or anything going along with this song, I'd be totally okay with that. So, no, I got a shipment today, Josh. I think you were here late. I got a shipment late of uh, one by one tan bricks. And I've filled out all the little areas in between the windows that I need and I have left over. So I'm good. Um, the, um, the thing I think I'm gonna need I, you know what? I don't know what I need now. I'm gonna crank through. Hi, Beth. Yes, I know, we've got like two minutes left. Um, and you're not up yet anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, no, Josh, I, uh, I think I got the roof bits covered. I think I got the tan bricks covered around the one section. I'm worried that I'm running out of uh, black two by fours, but I mean they're two by fours and they're black, which means I'm using them in internal roof structures, which means I can just use my own stuff. Um, it, it doesn't matter. I may have extra because I think we ordered a lot of extra. Um, I'm gonna try to build some more tower stuff internally with the red and black bricks, and I'm just hoping that I don't run out. So if you have two by four bricks, like in mass, like big quantities of it, that would be great. Otherwise, I think I'm good. Um, and I don't, don't worry about the, the dome. It's gonna get put back together um, and it'll be fine. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll be fine. And uh, it'll be ready for show. And uh, it doesn't matter what color. Um, I was trying to get some of the show slash play brick that we had at the convention because Everybody has a lot of that. Oh, this goes a little farther up. But I think I'm gonna be all right because I still have a ton of it and I still have a ton of stuff that I can use, so. Hey Beth, if you're listening, let the cat in. He probably needs to pee or drink. Ooh, new piece. Yay, because we don't wanna cover up the eggs. Uh, let's do this first so I know where it goes. But yeah, the next build, I may, instead of doing this, I'll do, um, oh, I don't know how many. 100, 200, whatever you got. So, I, and I wouldn't worry about it just yet. Let me uh, see if I can get through getting the roof built out. And if I can, then I'm not gonna worry about it because if it's stable now, it'll be stable when we get the roof built on. And now that this is all covered, 
That's where I'm gonna kill it tonight. I got a few pieces left, but I'm gonna work on that later. Um, <laughs> there's another piece. Yep, and I bet that's it. It's in here. I did this last time. Yeah, I gotta go back and put that piece in there. So anyway, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks Josh for volunteering for some bricks. Um, and uh, I'll be back maybe with Beth, maybe not on Sunday. And it'll probably be building this again. If not, I will try to get some um, microfighter bricks in and we can work on some of that. Um, or maybe some designing. I still haven't finished that Peltaclast frigate. So um, again, thanks for stopping by. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff if you're coming in after the fact. Otherwise, um, we'll talk to you guys later.